Uh, it's time for the math. Easy solution. Trying to discuss further into partial fraction decomposition. And now look at when the uh, factors in the denominator are repeating. So basically, in my earlier video, I went over general techniques for partial fraction decomposition and showed how to decompose functions with unique and yeah, and linear factors in the, the denominator. For example, we went over this example, which was 3x plus 2 over x squared plus x. Now this, when you factor the denominator uh, out, it, this becomes, well, 3x plus 2 over x. Now this is an x plus 1. So as you can see, this has yeah, has unique factors. So this is these are all basically unique right here. They don't repeat, and also they are well linear. So there is no power greater than uh, the power of one here on the x variable. Yeah, but what if the factors repeat and or are non-linear? Well, in this video, we'll go over basically when when there's just a repeating factor. In a later video, we'll go over when it's non-linear. So basically, consider the rational function with repeating factor x minus 1, which is this right here, x squared plus 1 divided by x times it by, well, x minus 1 cubed. So as you can see from here, well, this one has, this one doesn't repeat, but here, you have an x1 that repeats well three times. Yeah, so this repeats three times, hence the to the power of three. Yeah, and now in this case, well, we can't assume that the partial fraction contains only x or uh, x minus one. Yeah, basically, if we were to scroll back up here, uh, this answer, which I went over in the last video, this becomes, well, decomposes to two, over x plus 1 over x plus 1. So as you can see, these factors occur in the denominator of these fractions, of these partial fractions. But we can't assume that this contains only x or x minus 1 in the denominator. This is because we could possibly have an x minus 1 squared or even x minus 1 cubed in the denominator of the partial fractions and still add up to make our function. So, yeah, thus basically we can still use the same method we went over in a previous video, but this time we need to account for all possibilities of the partial fraction. So we have to write this as x plus x squared over x plus, I mean x squared plus 1 t divided by x over x minus 1 cubed. So now this equals 2 when we set up our coefficients. We'll have an a over x. So that's this this is one possibility. Now we have to have a b over well x minus one. And now we have to account for all the other cases. So we can also have an a c and x minus one squared, as well as d over x minus one cubed. Yeah, so for this case, uh, when there's a repeating factor, the only thing changes now is that we have to account for all of these cases. So the squared, the cubed, etc. So now when solving this like before, we multiply both sides by uh, the denominator here so that we get rid of all of these yeah, denominators. So multiply by x over x minus 1, 3 on both sides. So when we do this, this top part cancels. So we'll be left with, well, x squared plus 1. This equals 2. Now when we multiply this a over x, the x's cancel, so we're just left with x minus 1 cubed, plus right here, this x minus 1 is gone, so we'll have b times x times by x minus 1 squared. Now plus here, the c, there's an x minus 1 squared, so that, that will cancel, so we're left with x times x minus 1. And now this last one right here, the d, this x minus 1 cubed disappears. So we're just left with x right there. And now instead of uh, trying to basically simplify this further, like I showed in my earlier video, what we could do is pick values for x. So in this case, let's try to get, well, if we put x is 0, these all cancel. There's an x right there. 
So we want to try to eliminate some of the coefficients. So at x equals zero, and we could do this because, well, these a, b, c, and d just doesn't depend on the x. They're always constant. So when we have x equals to zero, plug this in, we get, well, one equals two. This is uh, a power of the negative one to power of three. That's just negative one. Let's put a negative there. And now we have plus, well, this is all zeros. So plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, because the zero, x is equal to zero. So we have a is equal to negative one. And now the other thing we could do is put, well, x equals to one, so that these ones become zero. So at x equals to one, we get, we get basically uh, one plus one on the left side, that's one squared, equals to, well, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, and now we have a d, so d, times by one, this is d. So d equals to two, so that just adds up to two. So we have these already. And now we have basically, we have uh, b and c remaining. So and now in solving these, we could well pick two more values for x. Yeah, pick two more values for x. And then what we get for right here is just two equations and we could solve these two unknowns. So what we get, let's just, we can pick any ones we want, and I'll try to pick really small ones, so the other small one that hasn't been taken, well, at x equals to negative one. So this is small, this is just the negative side of that. So when I do this, we get one squared, so again, so one plus one equals two. Right here, this is a times the by, this is gonna be negative one minus one, which equals to negative two, so we'll have a, a negative two, yeah, the negative goes out, so we'll just have a two cubed. Because it's uh, odd, odd power, the negative just stays negative. So we get plus b times by negative one. Now we have a negative two squared, that's just positive. So negative two squared, that's that. Plus now, and we know actually a, yeah, we know a is negative one. We'll just put that inside, so erase this will put a negative one, and now there's a negative, so that becomes, well, positive. I'll just erase this too, so we just have a uh, positive one. Let's leave this there. So what we get is plus two to the power of three. Now we have this part, now we get to this C. So C times by negative one times by X, which is negative one. At minus one, that's just negative two. Now the last part, D is equal to two. So we have two times negative one. So what we get here is two equals two, this is eight, two times two times two, that's four times two is eight. And now what we get is right here, so this is a plus, I'll just remove this. So we have negative one times it by, well, four, so that's just gonna be negative four B, plus right here, this two, so that becomes positive, so that is C times two, so we get a two C. Now this right here is a minus two over there. Okay, so that's what we get there, and now if we keep simplifying this, this is gonna be, well, yeah, so these add up these ones right here, so two, so eight minus two, that's six, and then move it over to the left side, that's gonna be, well, negative four, uh, yeah, negative four equals two, uh, 2c minus 4b. And now divide by, well, negative 2. Let's divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. So we get here, we get a 2 equals to a uh, negative c my, uh, plus 2b, just to make it easier. Or this is just 2b minus c, just to make it look uh, neater. So we get that now. So that's one equation. This equals to 2. So that's one equation. Now the second one, we could the next smallest number we could pick, just to make it easier, is at x equals to positive two. So when we plug this inside, we get well, two squared plus one equals two. Scroll back up here. So now we have yeah right here. So that's negative one. Yeah, so negative one times it by two minus one, which is one 
cubed. So basically, 2 minus 1 is just 1. So we can just remove that and go back up here. So now we have a plus b times it by uh, 2. And now we have a 2 minus 1. So that's just 2. And then the next one is plus c times it by 2. And then 2 minus 1 is just 1. Last one is plus d, which is 2 times 2. So plus 2 times 2. So that's what we get there. And now this equals 2, 5 equals 2. This is 4. It's negative 1 plus 2b plus 2c plus 4. So what this becomes, move this 4 on this side, we get, well, yeah, so basically move this here, we'll get a 6. And this is a 2b plus 2c plus 4. Move the 4 to this side, so we get a 2 equals to 2b plus 2c, divide everything by 2, we get a 1 equals to b plus c. So that's what we get here, so that's two equations, two unknowns. So now we equate them right here. So 1 equals yeah, b plus c, and now we also have here 2 equals to 2b minus c. So, yeah, so what we could do right here yeah, well, what you could do right here is just solve for b, I mean actually for c, so c is equal to, let's move this around, 1 minus b. Throw this inside, and then what we get output is 2 equals to 2b minus 1 minus b, which is, that's what c is. Solving this, this equals to 2, 2b minus 1 plus b. And now, yeah, now what we get right here, move this 2 to this side, so we get uh, 3, and I'll add, it, add these b's, so this is 3b, which equals to, well, b equals to 1. And now what we can do is just throw this in here. So c equals to 1 minus 1 equals to 0. So we put these all together, and we get basically uh, the final answer. So we get now x squared plus 1 over x, and this is x minus uh, 3 right here. This equals to, well, a over x. And now a, we know, is scrolling all the way back here. a is negative 1, d is 2. So we get uh, negative 1, and now we have plus b, with this one's x minus 1. That's 1, that's b. Plus c is 0. So we remove that, and now we add the d, which is here, x minus 1 cubed. Yeah, and this is our answer. So basically, if you have repeating factors like this, it just makes the algebra you have to do much more complicated. But the only difference with the other method is you have to account for all possible partial fractions. So you have to do this uh, like that. And now one final note, basically, in this example, one of the coefficients turn out to be zero, but this is not always the case. And sometimes the coefficients are fractions too. For example, you could have something like, i.e. Uh, one over three, two, four, uh, two over three, or two over five, et cetera. So basically, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, sometimes you'll get something like that. It won't be as simplified as this. But anyway, Seth, uh, that's all for today. In my next video, I'll go over when you have nonlinear factors. So you'll have something like uh, x squared plus 1, something like that inside the denominator, or like, like that. So something like this. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned uh, from this video. And like always, you could download these exact notes in the link below. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.